everybody loves cookies. And if I give you the option of having three-fourths of a cookie, 0 0.7 of a cookie, or two-thirds of a cookie, which one would you rather have? Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to introduce rational numbers. Okay, so let's talk about the cookies. Three-fourths of a cookie, 0 0.7 of a cookie, or two-thirds of a cookie. Now, I don't know about you, but I want the most cookie I can get. So, if I'm looking at this, I want to choose which one's greater. Well, the problem is, is we've got fractions and decimals, uh, so it's a bit tough to compare. So what we need to do is choose one. We can either make them all fractions or all decimals. Most of the time, it's going to be easiest to make them all decimals because if you try to do all fractions, then to compare, you also have to have common denominators, which we don't. So most of the time, you're going to want to just change them all to decimals. That's going to be the quickest and easiest. Well, three-fourths as a decimal, hopefully you have that memorized. That's just 0 0.75. 0 0.7 is already good. And then two-thirds. I don't know if you have that memorized. Uh, it's a good thing to have memorized if you don't. Hopefully you know one-third. That's 0 0.3 repeating. That line means that number repeats. That digit repeats over and over and over again an infinite amount of times. So 0 0.33333 forever. If that's one-third, well then two-thirds is just 0 0.6 repeating. Okay, so 0 0.66666. If you don't have those memorized, try to. They're going to help you out a lot. You'll see them all the time. But if not, you can always convert this to a decimal by dividing. 2 divided by 3, and you will get the same thing. Now that they're all decimals, hopefully it's pretty easy to see uh, which one's greater or the greatest, and that is 0 0.75. These both have 7 in the tenths place, but then we have to go to the next. And if I wanted to, I could add a 0 there. So it's really 75 hundredths compared to 70 hundredths. Uh, and obviously that is greater. And don't get confused. 0 0.6 repeating is like 0 0.66666 forever. But we don't care about all those 6s at the end or going to infinity. We're looking... Here, right off, right off the bat at the tenths place, 7 is greater than 10, so we don't even care what's after. We already know that that's uh, actually the least. So if you have the option, take three-fourths of a cookie. Okay, let's first talk about what are rational numbers. When you see rational numbers, think ratio, right? It's in the word. Rational, the first part is ratio. Uh, so rational numbers are just numbers that can be written as the ratio of two integers. So a ratio we could write like a fraction, right? A to B can be written as A over B, as long as B is not zero. Because remember, if B is zero, then that's undefined, right? Uh, so as long as A and B are integers, okay, then you're good. You've got rational numbers. Now, we might be, you might be getting a little bit confused talking integers, talking rational numbers, and you're thinking whole numbers, and you're getting them all mixed up. Well, let's just do a quick little, uh, a little chart or a little graph here to help you remember uh, what's what. Well, at the very basic, we have whole numbers. Right? That's what you dealt with when you were a little kid, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, keep going. Uh, no negative numbers here, okay? No decimals. Right? Just whole numbers. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry, I should have zero there. Keeps going forever. Then we talked about integers, right? Well, integers include all the whole numbers, but then it also includes, sorry, let me write that, integers. But then it also includes the negative whole numbers. So then we've got negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and so on. But it also has all those whole numbers still. Now we're getting into rational numbers. Now, rational numbers includes all the whole numbers. It includes all integers. 
But now we are also going to talk about rational numbers. Okay. We're also going to talk about fractions and decimals. So now that's what we're talking about, rational numbers. So 0 0.53 fourths, uh, 0 0.3 repeating, um, let's see, 0 0.78, negative 2 thirds, right? Negative 4.5. Those are all rational numbers, okay? So that's important. Hopefully that helps kind of break it down for you, the difference between whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Rational numbers include all of this stuff here, okay? So let's look at some examples of rational numbers and really go over this uh, definition. Okay, here's some examples. We're kind of testing, uh, is it a rational number? So can we write it as a ratio of two integers where the denominator is not zero? So two, is that a rational number? Well, yeah, we can write that as two over one. Two and one are both integers, we're good. Negative 3 can be written as negative 3 over 1. Those are both integers. Remember, a negative 3 is an integer. Uh, negative a half. Well, I can write that as negative 1 over 2. I can also write it as 1 over negative 2. Those are both integers, so that's good. Uh, 0 0.25 is the same as 1 fourth. That's good. Those are both integers. 0 0.6 repeating, if you remember from earlier, that's the same as two-thirds. So again, those are both integers. So all of these are examples of rational numbers. Okay, uh, An obvious example of a number that's not a rational number would be pi, right? Pi continues forever, never repeats, so you cannot write it as uh, a ratio of two integers, like a over b. So pi is not rational, that's irrational. And there's other examples, but uh, here's some ones of Rational numbers, and that's how you check. Let's do an example. Okay, example one. Write as a decimal. So each of these we're going to convert to a decimal. Uh, fractions and decimals can go. You can go back and forth between the two. Now, negative two and one fourth. Well, I know that's two holes. Uh, so that's going to be negative two. My decimal point is going to be there, and then I got to think. Well, what is one fourth as a decimal? One fourth as a decimal is 0.25, hopefully you have that memorized, so that's simply negative 2.25. Now, another way to do it, if you wanted to, you can convert it to an improper fraction, which would be, right, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, negative 9 over 4, and then this just means division, so I can do 9 divided by 4, well that goes twice, subtract, I get 8, that's 1, add a decimal point, add a 0, 4 into 10 is 2. Uh, again, that's 8, subtract, I get 2, bring another 0 down, 4 to 20 is 5. And remember, it was negative, so negative 2.5. We get the same exact thing, okay? Um, now, let's look at the next one, 5 elevenths. Again, like I just said, this line in a fraction, that means division, okay? That's really important, okay? I would definitely write that down. So this means 5 divided by 11. So to convert it to a decimal, that's all we have to do. 5 divided by 11. 11 into 5 will zero times, so I add a decimal here, add a decimal here, add a zero. 11 into 50 goes four times, that's 44, subtract, I get six. I'm not done, add a, another zero, bring it down, and I get 60. Uh, 11 into 60 goes five times, that's 55. Subtract, I get five, add a zero, bring it down, 50. 11 into 50 is 4, and you might start to notice a pattern, right? That's 44, subtract, I get 6, it would be 60 again, so 4, 5 again, and it's going to keep going on forever. So the way that I write this as a decimal sense, the 4 and the 5 are repeating, I'm going to write it as 0 
with the line over the 4 and the 5. That means the 4 and the 5 are what's repeating. Okay, This is called a repeating decimal. Okay, Because the 4 and the 5 repeat over and over and over again. 40, 0 0.45, 45, 45, 45, right? On and on and on. This one, it's not repeating, it stopped, it ended. So we call that, you can think of the movie The Terminator, it's called a terminating decimal. So make sure you know the difference between the two. Terminating decimals, they stop, they end, they terminate. Uh, repeating decimals, repeat, on and on and on forever. Okay. Uh, here's some to try on your own. All right, example two, write negative 0 0.26 as a fraction in simplest form. Well, to be able to do that, you need to know your place values. So negative 2.6, I'm going to, obviously my fraction is going to be negative, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'll just kind of put that there and uh, kind of forget about it a little bit and just concentrate on this, 0 0.26. Well, if you know your place values, this is the tenths place. That's the hundreds place. So if you read it out loud to yourself and you can say 26 hundredths, that gives you a kind of a hint as to what the fraction is going to look like. 26 hundredths. Okay. So maybe write yourself a little hint. When you're converting it from decimals to fractions, read, read it aloud. Use those place values, and that'll give you an idea of, of what it's going to look like as a fraction. Now, the second part, make sure it's in simplest form. Well, this is definitely not in simplest form. They're both even numbers. So I can divide that by 2 and divide that by 2, and I get negative 13 over 50. Okay, And that is now in simplest form. So that's how you convert from decimals to fractions. Remember, just read it out loud, remember your place values, and uh, simplify it at the end. Okay, here's some more to try on your own. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe.